Good morning students, Chris, Tap in the Cap, Motor Legends. Now for today's lecture, I'd like you to turn to page 50 of your workbooks, go to the chapter on motorcycle apparel, and then find the module on motorcycle helmets. So today we're gonna to be talking about motorcycle helmet fitting. We're gonna talk about why it's important, what constitutes a good fit, how to achieve a good fit. Now, a good fit is important basically because if a helmet doesn't fit the way it is intended to do, it is not gonna protect your head in the way that it's intended to do. So a poor fitting helmet is basically a dangerous helmet. Helmet has a number of roles. The outer shell is about puncture resistance, about making sure that if you land or hit on a sharper object, that that object is not gonna pass into the helmet and obviously reach your head. But arguably the main role of a motorcycle helmet is to absorb energy in an impact. And that's what the EPS, the white stuff in a helmet does. So let's say you're riding along, you fall off the bike, your head lands, hits the road or hits a curb. Now that impact creates energy, is transferred into energy and that energy will have the force of moving the brain across from one side of the skulls to the other. And what the EPS is doing, we're looking to dissipate that energy as at the point of impact, and we're trying to slow down the movement of the brain across the skull. And that's important because the brain will go from one side of the skull to the other, it will bounce on the other side, and it will bounce back. And it can do that because the brain is not a solid object, it is a, an organ that is suspended in cerebrospinal fluid. It will hit the other side, it will bounce back, and if the impact is hard enough, the brain will bruise. And if you get bruising to too great a degree, you end up with brain damage, and obviously the catastrophic consequences are just not worth considering. Now, there are other problems that are associated with poor fitting helmets. So let's look at a loose helmet. If you've got a loose helmet when you're riding along and put in a lifesaver, the helmet may not turn with you. Obviously that's going to impair your vision. It's not safe to have a helmet that is loose and moving around. Similarly, if you're riding along at speed on the motorway, if the helmet is loose, it's gonna be buffeting around, it'll create vibrations, you'll get double vision. That doesn't sound safe to me. You're also gonna be wearing a noisy helmet. If you've got a loose helmet, a loose helmet by definition won't have tight cheek pads. The air is gonna come in underneath the chin. It's gonna reach your ears because the cheek pads are not shielding your ears. So that helmet is gonna be noisy. That's gonna diminish your concentration. Again, you're not gonna be riding safely. Importantly, it also has a role in this slowing down of the movement of the brain from one side of the skull to the other. Because what we're looking for, when we have an impact, we've got the EPS against our head. On that impact, that energy, we're looking to have it dissipate throughout the EPS. If the helmet is out here, the initial impact, the helmet will not slow down, it will be moving very quickly, and that's gonna speed up the movement of the brain from one side of the skull to the other. So a loose fitting helmet is quite simply dangerous. There are similar problems, similar but different problems associated with a helmet that is too tight. The first thing, of course, is a tight helmet is just going to be uncomfortable. And if you're wearing an uncomfortable helmet, if you're thinking about, oh, this hurts here, this hurts there, you are not concentrating on the road. And there's a large body of thought that says that the greatest contribution to road safety, as far as motorcyclists is concerned, is the ability to be comfortable on the bike and to concentrate on the roads around you, to watch all the hazards, to see what's going on, and to be mindful of all of those who are trying to ruin your day. Now, of course, in extremis, that lack of comfort, that discomfort can materialize in the form of a headache. And we all know, if you set off on a journey of five hours and you start to get a headache after an hour, that is just un absolutely unbearable. It's gonna ruin the whole day. And again, you're not gonna be riding safely. There's another minor consequence of having a helmet that is too tight. It's still important, but it's not as significant maybe. And it's that if you have a slightly jowly, fatter face and you squeeze it in with a helmet that is too tight, that's gonna bring blood to the surface. It's gonna be squeezing it, your face is gonna go red, that is gonna generate heat. Now in the winter, that is gonna cause a helmet to fog prematurely because you've got the cold air outside, you've got your warm breath inside, but if that heat is made greater by skin that's also hot because it's squeezed together, it's all pushed up, that's gonna cause your visor to fog sooner than it might do. Now in a recent government report, it was stated that 25% of people are actually wearing the wrong size of motorcycle helmet. I think we would suggest that there's another tranche of riders who may be riding in some ways the right size of helmet, but they're wearing the wrong shape of helmet. And as we're gonna 
go along and talk about today, that is equally important. Now, the fact is that most people are still buying their helmets on considerations of style, the graphics of a helmet, the colors of a helmet, and so on. Sometimes they're buying out of brand loyalty, and there's nothing wrong with that, but the most important consideration whenever you're buying a helmet has got to be fit. The problem is that the helmet that you've spent weeks looking at on the internet, you've gone, you've looked at every brand of helmet, you've been on to dozens of retailers' websites, you've honed it down to the helmet that you really like. When you go to look at that helmet, you may just have to accept that that helmet is not gonna work on you because just because the circumference of that helmet is the same as the circumference of your head, it may not work on you because your head may very simply be the wrong shape for that helmet. A good fit is not always the same as a comfortable fit. So imagine that you put on a helmet that's one size too big for you. That might feel incredibly comfortable, but this is not a pair of slippers. This thing here, this helmet has a job to do. A good fit though, if you achieve the fit that we are looking for, that should certainly not be uncomfortable. With a good fit, there'll be a sense of snugness to the helmet. So all around the skull, we want a sense of evenness that your skull is being enveloped, you can feel the helmet all around it, but we do not want, and we'll come back to this later in the talk because we're gonna talk about how we adjust helmets for fit and so on, but we don't want any tightness, we don't want any pressure on the skull, we don't want what we call hot spots because what's gonna happen once you're riding, once you heat up, once blood goes to your head and it expands a little bit, that's gonna become an area where you could get a headache. So that's certainly something that we're trying to avoid. We are at the same time looking for a bit of a squeeze in the cheek. So whilst we've said we want a fit that's not uncomfortable, we are gonna be looking for a bit of tightness in the cheeks, what we call a chipmunk cheek. Again, we'll come back and talk about this later. The problem is that most retailers out there don't know what constitutes a good fit. Now, I don't know whether that's from poor training or because most of them don't care and because it's just too much hassle. But in too many shops, our customers tell us that they go and ask about a helmet and someone says, they're over there, try one on. When you found one that's comfortable, come back and see me and pay for it. The essence of getting the correct helmet is to find a helmet that matches your shape. What you have to bear in mind is that all heads, all of our heads have different shapes and all of helmets, all helmets have a different shape as well. So. In Europe, the general shape is an oval shape. So that's a shape that's longer from front to back. But some, no one has a perfect overly, an oval shaped head. Some of us have heads that are a bit rounder than that. So even though I, for example, have a head that's basically oval, my head is wider at the back, that causes me a headache in some brands of helmets. Others have very long, thin, narrow heads that even though in Europe we have helmets generally that are more of an oval shape. If you over oval the oval, again, you're gonna have problems with the helmet. So what you need to understand, and again, I don't think that many retailers do, is that the different helmet brands have different shapes. So classically, this Ashui has a very oval shape. And Arai, even though lots of helmets within the Arai range differ a little bit, they have a slightly rounder oval. A Shubath helmet is even more round, a Shark even more round, and so on. So that's why occasionally, and we hope that they never see us, but when we have a customer who comes in, comes marching into the shop and says, I'm looking for a helmet in brown, please, or blue, or yellow, or green, we can't help but internally roll our eyes a little bit because that's not what getting a safe helmet is all about. Fit is the issue. We want a helmet that fits properly, that is comfortable in a way that is safe. Frankly, all the rest, it's just vanity. I sometimes feel that the challenge of getting a customer into a helmet to get the customer's head shape to match the shape of a helmet, that challenge is rather akin to the challenge we give a young toddler when they give them what I think is called a hammer bench. That's one of those benches with little shapes in. You give them blocks and they have a little hammer and they have to hammer those blocks into those holes. Now in this analogy, the block shapes are heads, the holes are helmets, and what we're trying to do is match exactly the shape of one of those blocks or match the shape of a customer's head to the hole or the helmet. And when it's done right, there is a glove-like snugness all around the cranium. There should be no tightness, no hot spots, no points of pressure. By the same token, there should be no gaps. There shouldn't be any looseness. So basically, this is what I'm looking to do.
Here indeed is a kid's hammer bench. So we have a little a triangular block of wood that fits really neatly into the triangular shape. We have a heart shape piece of wood and that fits really nicely into the heart shape in the bench. A star shape similarly fits really nicely and the toddler can bang away and knock these shapes through the bench quite easily. But I sometimes get the impression that in some motorcycle shops, if a customer goes in and says, that's the helmet I want, but it doesn't fit them, the assistant is not going to persuade them not to buy that helmet. They are going to try to persuade them that actually it's all gonna be okay. Over time it's gonna give, over time it's gonna fit. So we have a situation rather akin to this. This is a square block and that's the round hole. It doesn't really want to fit in there. That's not working. But even still, the assistant will say, don't worry, it is gonna work. But what he's done, he has created a problem. He's tried to fit a square shape into a round hole. And that is a problem that one day is gonna come back and visit the customer because that is a nightmare in the making. What he has done is essentially this. And that I would say is not the way to fit a motorcycle helmet. Anyway, that's the principle of what we're talking about today. Now I want to delve more deeply into the issues of sizes for helmets, the measurement around the cranium. I want to talk about helmet shapes and head shapes in a little bit more detail. First thing, first point I want to make is that nobody is invariably a medium or a large or an extra large in a helmet because that changes very much from brand to brand. So let's say you have a head that in circumference measures 58. Now actually in a Shoei helmet, that will be a medium. But if you want a Schubert helmet, that is gonna be a large. Now, when you come in to see us for a helmet and you want a helmet fitting, the starting point is still a measure. We need to measure your head just to give us some place to start. So we take a device like this. It's a simple head measuring device, but it fits nicely in just the right place where we would expect a helmet to grip the skull, sits just above the nose, we turn this wheel until we find the measure of your head. So it's easily done at home, but this gives us a pretty definitive measure of your head. But it's only a starting point because actually, if you're a 58 and you fit in one kind of helmet, then someone else who's a 58 may not be able to fit into that helmet at all. So let's say you've got an arrow head. So an arrow head is a kind of, it's a form of oval in terms of its shape. So you're a 58, this fits you perfectly. But someone else who's a 58 with a rounder head will find that they just cannot get into that helmet. They're gonna find it way too small. And it's why, in our view, it can be dangerous to buy a helmet online. It can certainly be dangerous if you're buying a brand that you're not used to, if you're buying a brand where you do not know what the shape of that helmet is. And let's face it, most of us, unless we're working in the industry, don't know what shape a helmet is. The, Exception, I suppose, is if you're buying a repeat helmet, if you've got a model, a certain Arai or a certain Shui or a certain Shark, if you're buying a repeat of that helmet, you can be fairly sure. But if you're going from an HJC to an Arai or from a Shark to a roof, then you are really taking a risk if all you've got to go on is the measurement of your head. Now, to demonstrate this point more visually, I want to introduce you to two of our customers, two of our customers with, with particularly misshapen heads. Here we have Bill, who has what we would call a long oval head. And here we have Phil, who has a rounder head. I hasten to add that these shapes are, for illustrative purposes, are a little bit exaggerated. Now the interesting thing, you can see the difference between them, but both measure around their circumference as a 58 centimetre head. So they have both technically got the same size head. Now, Bill is a Shui helmet wearer, and that's appropriate because Shui has an oval shape. It's a shape that's even more oval than an arrow. So if I put him in a Shui helmet, that's 
a pretty perfect fit. He won't find any pressure on his head. It follows the shape of his head. It's pretty much a perfect fit. Now, Phil, who has a rounder head, we're showing him here in a rounder helmet, something like a shoe berth. I hasten to add once again that we've exaggerated these for illustrative purposes. The difference between a shoey and an arai is nowhere near as much. But again, these helmets are both 58. So if I put Phil into a 58 shoe berth, he measures pretty bang on. Now, for whatever reasons, Bill is dissatisfied with his shoey. He's heard a lot of good things about the shoe berth, so decides that he would like to try the shoe berth on. So, he's a size 58. He assumes he's going to be a 58 in a shoe berth. He puts the shoe berth on, and that's going to be excruciating. That helmet is going to give him a huge headache, and even still, there are going to be gaps down the side. So, that isn't going to work for him. By the same token, Phil is bored with his shoe berth, has heard great things about the shoey, and decides that that might make a nice change. So he goes and tries on a shoey. What's going to happen with Phil? He's going to have enormous pressure on the side of his head, whereas Bill is going to have a headache at the front or the back. Phil's going to find that he's got immense pressure on the side of his head. That isn't going to work. So what they need to do is move to a larger size helmet. So Phil, in order to find a shoe berth that's going to work for him, needs to go up a size. And so he's not going to get a headache in this helmet. And that's one of the main considerations in a helmet. We want to make sure that there's no pressure anywhere. So this helmet, which is actually a 62, is not going to give him pressure front to back. But you can see we've got these huge wide gaps on the side. So that helmet's going to rock about. It's not going to be at all appropriate. So he can fit into the helmet, but I just don't think that's going to work for him. Similarly, Phil, he's going to try a shoey, and we found a shoey that's not going to put pressure on the side of his head. And that works OK. But he's got these enormous gaps front and back. So the helmet's going to rock forward and backwards. It's not going to sit nicely. It is not going to be appropriate. So the point I'm trying to make is a simple one. It's a point we've made before. What we're trying to do when we are fitting someone into a helmet, the size, the measure is a starting point, as I've mentioned, but we are trying to match a head shape to a helmet shape. That is the most important part of fitting somebody into a helmet. If you come and see us at Moto Legends for a helmet fitting, we'll start off with an accurate measurement of your head of the circumference of your head. And we'll do that using the tool that we've already looked at. We'll get that in place. We get this to fit fairly tightly and that will give you or give us a size for your head. So a 57, 58, whatever. Now, having looked at you, we may already have a view about the kind of helmet that's gonna work on you. If we've seen that you've got a particularly round head, we might think that something like a shoey is gonna be a problem. But normally we will take that head measurement. We've already discussed that it's really nothing more than a starting point, but we'll take that head measurement We'll find the helmet that you like in that measure and we'll, we'll try it on. We will then conduct a series of tests. Now the first test we do is an old fashioned police test. It's called the finger test. And it's designed to see whether this helmet is on one level going to create a headache for you. So if we take a helmet like this, now you can see why I don't take my cap off a lot. Right. So this test, for this test, what we do, we ask you to get your hands like this, put them around the back of the helmet like that, and then push. Now, we're not looking for you to twist. It's not about that. We're looking for you to push so that you create space around the forehead. So normally when you're riding, we expect this forehead to sit neatly against the skull. 
but we want to know that there's some space in there. And the reason we do is there is a comfort liner in a helmet. So you've got the EPS, that's the white stuff normally, and then you've got a comfort liner that your head sits against. And we want to know that your head is nicely nestled in that comfort liner. That comfort liner, in general, is about the thickness of a finger. That's the thickness of the sponge that goes around the inside of the EPS. If, when you push it forward, we can get a finger around there nice and gently, then we can be fairly confident that this helmet is not going to give you a headache, certainly on the forehead. If, by contrast, when you push it, we can only get a cigarette paper up there, what that means is that you already, your head is already compressing the comfort liner. You are too big for the helmet, and we're going to have problems, or you're going to have problems, in terms of a headache, potentially. By contrast, if, when you do this and push it forward, we can put a whole hand up there, then clearly the helmet is too big, and that's not going to work either. The next thing we do, we're concerned about the pressure on the side of the helmet. Now, if you can feel pressure here at any point around the skull, it could mean that this is the wrong helmet for you. So, for example, I have a wide head at the back. This helmet would not work for me. It's a shoey. I love shoeys, but shoeys just don't work on me. Their shape is, is too narrow. So, if I can feel, or if you can feel any pressure around the side here, We've discussed already, we call them hot spots, but if you think that that's gonna be an issue, then maybe this helmet is not right for you. Similarly, if you can feel that there are big gaps anywhere around the helmet, at the back or up the sides, this helmet may not be the right helmet for you. Now, experienced motorcyclists who've been riding for many years, who've tried lots of helmets on, will kind of instinctively know, they'll put a helmet on and they can tell whether it's gonna work for them, they can tell whether it's a good fit. But if you're a newer motorcyclist, if you're recently to motorcycling, you've got nothing really to compare it with, and it's gonna be hard to know. So this forehead test is fairly easy, we can do that. We can absolutely tell whether a helmet is gonna work, but we can't see what's going on around here. So that's a much harder thing to get right. So what we often say to people who are buying a helmet, if they are less experienced in this, in this field, is take the helmet and go home, sit it in the living room, the heating will be on, the central heat, heating will, will be on. We want you to get a wee, wee bit warm, your head is gonna expand. And if you wear the helmet around the house for an hour or so, you will then, if, you, if you're gonna get any hot spots, you will start to feel them. Because if you're here in the shop for 15 minutes, you won't really experience those kind of issues. But what we're trying to replicate is a situation where you're riding for a couple of hours and it's only after an hour or so that that pain develops. So we are very happy whenever anyone buys a helmet to take it home, watch TV in it. We'd ask you not to ride it up to Scotland in it, but wear it, see if any pressure points develop. If none do after an hour or so, then you can be fairly confident that the helmet is gonna work. But obviously, if pressure points appear, then bring it back, it's probably not the helmet for you. Ironically, one of the one-star reviews that we've got on our Trustpilot account is from a lady who came into the shop one Sunday afternoon. She would not accept anything but a Shubert M1. She came down and said, I want a Shubert F1. We didn't really have the perfect size for her, but she put it on, it was a little bit tight on the forehead, and she said, no, no, I need it, I'm not gonna look at anything else. She then left here to ride to the port to go on an eight day holiday around Europe. That is the wrong way to buy a helmet, to test a helmet, because after a couple of days, the helmet proved to be wrong. She was in the middle of France, she had no choice. That helmet gave her an immense headache during the entire holiday. She came back, uh, maybe predictably, and she gave us a one star review. Anyway, there are some other things that we're looking at in terms of the test. We want the helmet to sit about a finger's width above the eyebrows. Now, I'm going to loosen the strap here, but if, if we see a helmet that sat all the way up here, the immediate thought is this helmet is too small because a helmet needs to sit in the right position. If it's too, if it's too high, it's not coming far enough down the head, it indicates, we would do further checks to test this, but it indicates that the helmet is maybe too small. By the same token, if the helmet sits here, then it implies that the helmet is too big and is sat too low. And a helmet that sits too low is a liability because when you're on the bike, you wanna be able to look down the road to see a mile down the road to see what's ahead. And you can't do that if the brim of the helmet is sat on your eyebrows or if you do, it means you've got a crooky neck, that's uncomfortable. So there is a correct height that we're looking for. As I say, about a finger's width above the eyebrows. 
That, al that should also mean that the eyes sit in about the middle of the aperture. If for whatever reason. We can't always tell whether this finger width is the absolute right position for you and your head. You may be someone who just has a head of a particular shape and the helmet, there may just be more forehead shown because you have a very tall forehead or there may not be enough. Now, if a helmet sits properly, it's comfortable all around the sides, it's comfortable front to back, but it still sits low. What we'll sometimes do, we have a series of sponges. I'm gonna give this secret away. They're actually just domestic sponges, but we have them in different thicknesses. We put them in the top of the helmet and it will just raise the helmet. So if you've got a helmet that sits here, we'll put a sponge in, it might raise it to the right position. That doesn't compromise safety in any way. In fact, on one level, it might even improve it. But we are always keen to get the helmet to sit in pretty much the right place. The other thing that can tell us whether a helmet is sitting properly is when you move it up and down, it should be moving your eyebrows and skin. If when you move it up and down, nothing is moving, again, it's gonna indicate that it's, it's too loose. So when you move the helmet up and down, it should go with you. Now I'm gonna do this, the chin strength back up because some people when they come and try a helmet on, do this. Well, that's not really a test of anything valid because this is a pivot, a pivot point. You can always twist a helmet around this pivot point. So to be able to do that is nothing special. You can do that pretty much with any helmet. Certainly what we want to do, however, is to make sure that this chin strap cannot come past your chin because it, if it does, and most, most chin straps are adjustable. This is a double D ring, but you'll have a micrometric adjuster. And if that's not enough, there'll be a way of adjusting it further on the side but we want to make sure that this can't move too far because if that can come beyond the chin, obviously in an accident, the helmet can come off. So in examining how we conduct a helmet fitting here at Moto Legends, we've already looked at the fit around the cranium, that is the head in a horizontal plane, but it's also important that we get it right, the fit right in a vertical plane because we all have different shaped faces and helmets have to fit us all pr properly. There are people with pear-shaped faces, people with jowly cheeks, it's got to fit everyone. What we do here at Moto Legends, the first test we do when we're looking at this particular facet, we put the helmet on, I exaggerate this one, this helmet is too big for me, so I exaggerate to make the point. We hold on to it, we ask you to turn your head from left to right, and what's gonna happen in this helmet, you will move it and the helmet won't move. This is clearly too loose, it's not gonna be right in an accident, it's gonna move around at speed, this is not the kind of fit that we're looking for. In this helmet, which is a much better fit, it's gonna be a different kettle of fish. So when we hold on to it and ask you to turn your head from left to right, you're gonna force the helmet round. This is a nice fit. What we are looking for is a squeeze of the cheeks. We want this to be pushing into the cheeks. We call it a chipmunk cheek, but we like to see slightly bulging cheeks here. We want it tight. We don't want it to be uncomfortable, although tight cheek pads are not gonna cause the problem in the way that a tight, um, fit around the head is, is going to cause. So it's not the end of the world if it's a wee bit tight here. This is not a pair of slippers, as we've said before. This is a piece of protective wear. It's got to fit properly. There's another issue, which is that cheek pads give very quickly. So if you were to take a helmet on and off a dozen times, you would find that the cheek pads are loosening pretty swiftly. And certainly three months down the road, six months down the road, the fit is gonna be different. So if these are not tight, very quickly the helmet is gonna to become too loose. Different on the forehead because the forehead, the EPS that lines the helmet, that only gives it about 3% a year. So if you've got a helmet that is tight around the forehead, that's gonna take a long time to become comfortable. If it's a little bit tight in the cheeks, that's gonna diminish in terms of the pressure really rather quickly. The way we look at it is if the helmet, if when you've got the helmet on and you've got the cheeks squeezed, if when you open and close your mouth, your teeth are lightly brushing the inside of your cheeks, that's fine by us. As I say, it's going to give a little bit anyway. If you're drawing blood, then it may be we've just gone a little bit too far. So tight cheeks, secure the helmet, safer in an accident, won't move around at speed, it won't wobble, it's gonna make the helmet quieter because noise can't come past. And as I mentioned, it's gonna cause the helmet to last longer. If you've got Loose cheek pads, it's the opposite. The helmet won't be secure. It won't absorb, as we've mentioned before. It won't 
absorb the impact in an accident in the way it's meant to. It's going to move around at speed. It's going to be noisy. And in six months time, you'll find that helmet is too loose. So let's look at a couple of our customers to demonstrate this point. We've got Tim. We've got Jim. And we've got Bryn. Now, the interesting point about all of these fellas is they all have exactly the same head dimension. So they all measure a 58 centimeter in terms of the circumference of the head. But clearly, they're not all going to take the same helmet. And again, this highlights the point I was making before that when you order on the internet or you just assume that you're a 58 and it's going to work, how can that possibly be the case when these face shapes are so markedly different? And the helmet that fits him properly is clearly not going to fit him properly. So you cannot just rely on saying I'm a medium or a large or a 58 or a 61 and expect the helmet to fit. There are some options within helmets. There are helmets that we as retailers know fit a little bit more loosely, helmets that we know fit a little bit more tightly. So there's a little bit that we can do in choosing the right helmet to fit a certain shape of face. But actually what this puts us into is the realm of customized fitting, changing the interior parts to make a helmet fit a little bit better. And that's what we're gonna go and talk about now. So when it comes to the customization of the fit of a helmet, there are two brands that stand head and shoulders above every other brand on the market. And those brands are Shui and Arai. And in fact, I suppose it's not unfair to say that they stand head and shoulders above every other helmet brand in most respects. Now, as a company, we've always had a marginal preference for Shui. Arai's are brilliant, but they tend to be a little bit bigger because of the way they are constructed. They have a super thick outer shell and then a thicker compensating EPS. They're a little bit heavier because Arai comes out of a racing background. They are well vented, but they tend to be a little bit noisier than Shoeys. They're also, it's got to be said, because of the kind of company we are, they're a bit aggressive, they're a bit racy for, for us. The other thing, of course, is that because on a point of philosophy, Mr. Arai won't allow a drop-down sun visor, we think that's a useful addition in a motorcycle helmet. And they also don't make a flip lid, and we love flip lids. So even though Arai is a great brand, we have a marginal preference for Shui. But both at the upper end have the ability to change all the cheek pads and headliners. Now, in a Shui, every single size, small, medium, large, extra large, double XL, you will find that there are three different headliners, different thicknesses, so that you can accommodate a head that is slightly too small for the helmet or a head that is slightly too large. You also get at least three different thicknesses of cheek pad in a Shui helmet. In fact, here, which is just one helmet, this is the X0. You can see here, one, two, three, four, plus the standard one. In this particular helmet, there are five different sizes of cheek pad, which really does enable us to take a helmet and custom fit it to make it work pretty well on most people. Notwithstanding what I've said about some heads won't fit into a Shui, if you've got a particularly round head, we cannot compensate for that. But for most people, we can just make a good fit into a perfect fit. So I'm just going to show you how this is done because don't understand why other dealers don't do this because these parts and accessories are not expensive and honestly it takes minutes to do. So here on an X0, that's the cheek pads out. That's the headliner out. So this is a size large, so I can put a different headliner in here. So different helmets in the range have a different way of doing this. This, in fact, I've got to say is one of the simplest ones, but they're all pretty similar. Let me just get this last one in place. So 
So as you can see, that really didn't take long. And this really does enable us to make a helmet fit almost perfectly. Now, what I should say is that the headliners, the bit around the top, they don't change the shape of a helmet because they're an even, an even thickness all the way around. But if you have a helmet and it's just a little bit too big, we put a thicker one in. If you are overfilling the helmet and it's a little bit tight, we put a thinner one in. The cheek pads, however, are the, that's the element where we can actually accommodate for those different faces we looked at. So you've got Jim who had a very thin face and you had Finn who had a, a, a bigger, fatter face. So what we would do, because everyone's got a different shaped face and as we've mentioned, there's no reason to expect that everyone is gonna fit in the same helmet. So if Jim came in, we would end up putting in, in this instance, this is a 47 mil cheek pad. So we will fill out the cheeks a little bit and enable that to, or enable the helmet to grip him tightly. If Finn wanted to wear this helmet, this is a 31 mil cheek pad, so we can take the pressure off so that we're not making his face uncomfortable in the helmet. So that's ultimately what we're aiming to do with a helmet fit. We've discussed the different sizes and so on, but ultimately to get an absolutely perfect fit, you need to be looking at a helmet in our view where there is at least some degree of customization and there aren't many brands that allow that. But I'm hoping that from what you've seen here, you can understand why we think it's difficult to get a helmet that fits you perfectly if you're just buying on the internet or you don't try a helmet on. And ideally, you want to be working with a retailer who can customize the fit, can a retailer who understands the different shapes of different helmets, who's gonna take time and care to find the right helmet for you. And then if it's not absolutely perfect, to do what we're doing here, which is to put a different thickness of liner in perhaps, or a different thickness of cheek pad. Firstly, I wanted to apologize for the sunglasses, but it's a really bright day here in sunny Surrey. Now, hope you enjoyed today's talk about helmet fitting. It's a subject that we take particularly seriously here at Moto Legends. We've spoken about why a helmet fit, a correct helmet fit is important, why it's important to get a helmet to fit as well as it can so it can do the job that it was intended to do. We've learned about what constitutes a good fit. We've spoken about that numerical size, 57, 58, whatever it is, how that's important, but it's actually only a starting point. That actually it's more important that what we do is find a helmet that's of a shape that mirrors the shape of your head because we all have differently sized or differently shaped heads and all helmets have a slightly different shape. We've seen how to test a helmet once it's on to check that it fits properly. And we've looked at the issues if it's not correct. Finally, we looked at our favorite brand, Shui, to show you how we can customize and change the fit to accommodate different sizing issues, and importantly, to make it fit on different face shapes. Because some people, as we've mentioned, have got angular faces, some people have more jowly faces. The bottom line is, if you want to get a helmet to fit, as well as it should do, as well as it could do, to be both comfortable and safe, you need to find a dealer who has the right helmets. You need to find a dealer who knows what they're doing, first off. Then they need really to have the kind of helmets that can be customized. Importantly, they then need to have in stock all of the parts, the headliners and the cheek pads that are required to give you that perfect fit. Anyway, good luck with that. If you don't succeed, if you don't find someone, well, you can always come and see us here in Guildford. Anyway, as far as I'm concerned, it's a beautiful day today. I'm going to go off down to the seaside because it's a great day for a ride. Oh, Graham, would you mind bringing me my, my lid? Graham, I don't think that's fitting quite correctly. Can you help? Right, that's much better. Anyway, hope to talk to you soon. This has been Chris, the chap in the cap at Moto Legends. We'll talk soon.